Hello, this is part 1 of 1D Kinematics by Hetarth Shah. In this topic, you will learn about one-dimensional kinematics. This topic contains a few big ideas, definitions, and equations. You will learn the difference between scalar and ve vector quantities. You will learn what the individual terms and symbols in equation mean and you will learn how to derive some of the new equations. You will also learn a few new SI units for new equations. Remember to pause the video and take notes. Scalar versus vector quantities. A scalar quantity is any quantity that is only described by magnitude which just means a numerical amount. A few examples are time, distance, average speed, and instantaneous speed. A vector quantity is any quantity that is described by both magnitude and direction. Some examples of vectors are position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Definitions. First, we have position, which is a location measured away from some reference point. Then we have displacement, which is a change in position from start to finish along the straight line joining the start and finish positions. And it is represented by delta x. This triangle symbol is what we call delta, and it means change in value in physics. Then we have velocity, which is speed linked with directions. For example, 3 meters per second north. So 3 meters per second is the speed part, and then north is the direction. Then we have acceleration, which is how quickly velocity changes. Now we have terms and their meanings. So first we have delta x, which again means displacement, and it is measured in meters, which is the SI unit. Then we have v bar which is average velocity or speed, and it is measured in meters per second. Then we have acceleration, which is, excel which is uh, represented by a lowercase a, and the SI unit for it is meters per second squared. Then we have v naught, this little O in the subscript, it means not, which is, um, and it just means initial velocity. Um, not is spelled N A U G H T, um, and it's measured in meters per second. So anything having to do with velocity is measured in meters per second. So final velocity, which is uh, V subscript F. It is measured in meters per second, and delta v, which is change in velocity, is represented by meters per second as well. Um, and then time is lowercase t, and it's just measured in seconds. Now we have a few basic equations. So first we have delta x equals fi uh, po final position minus initial position or x sub f minus x naught. And anytime we have a delta sign, again, it means change in value, which can be found by subtracting the final minus initial of the value that it represents. 
So in this case, delta x equals x sub f minus x naught, or final position minus initial position. And we can see that here with the acceleration equation. So acceleration equals delta v over t, which can be all, which can also be written as acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over t. And if you rearrange this equation uh, to solve for final velocity, uh, you, you get this equation. And to rearrange this, you can just multiply by t on both sides. So here on this side, the t will uh, get cancelled out and here you'll have a t and then you would just add v naught to both sides. So final velocity equals v naught plus a t. Um, then we have v bar, which is average velocity, equals displacement over time, or delta x over t. And si since this is average, we can do v bar equals v naught plus v, uh, v sub f, or initial velocity plus final velocity, divided by 2, since average velocity is the, vo uh, the average of the two velocities. And this can also be rearranged as delta x equals v bar t by just multiplying by t on both sides. Um, a few big ideas. Velocity is motion, and acceleration ha is how quickly motion changes. Whenever velocity and acceleration point in the same direction, the object is speeding up. And whenever velocity and acceleration point in the opposite direction, the object is slowing down. And there are three main ways acceleration takes place, which are when the object is speeding up, slowing down, or changing its direction. In the next video, we will go. We will do a, a few practice problems to make sure we have grasped the new equation, the basic equations. And we will also derive two new equations from the equations that we have now. I hope this has helped you learn a little bit more about 1D kinematics in physics. And see you next time. Bye.